What's up with it, man? It's the Kid Push Man Mitch, host of the No Fluff Podcast, aka Swag Whips Bag. You already know the vibes. And we back at another scene of the No Fluff. But I got a real special guest today. But before I even introduce him, you know what you got to do. Hit that subscribe button. You got to subscribe to the vibe so I can get you real live. You feel me? So this is my brother right here, man. Mr. Jay Hines, man, a.k.a. Mr. Spiffy, Mr. Fresh, <laughs> meant to get you fresh. But I don't want to do a disservice. All right? I want to make sure you introduce yourself. Tell everybody why they should know who Joseph Hines is. Yeah, so again, guys, my name is Joseph Hines. And essentially what I do is I help high performers grow their style and their network. So on the style side, I help high performers better communicate who they are in the spaces that they go. So whether that's a CEO, whether it's your entrepreneur, whether it's your entertainer, um, those are the type of people that I generally connect with and, and help style on a day-to-day -day basis. And on the network side, um, I help high performers grow the network, right? What we realize is a lot of guys that get to the point where they're making a lot of money, but they don't have a lot of time, and they tend to be the only one at the top of the mountain that's doing the type of things that they're doing. Uh, but they make the mistake of trying to go back down and grab other people up who aren't climbers, right? Mm. And at the end of the day, when you try to grab other people who aren't climbers, uh, who do you think they're going to pull down? You. Right? And a lot of people can't, uh, they, they can't recover when they fall down from a mountain, right? It's okay to get pushed off a step stool, but if you fall off a mountain, you might not recover. So um, we just wanted to curate an environment for like-minded guys, high performers who are looking to be more, do more, have more. And that's what I do on the, the network side of things with the community we've created with my business partner, The Standard. Well, that was a hell of an introduction. These, <laughs> this guy can talk. You can talk, bro. You can talk. Appreciate it, man. So look, like, like first of all, mm -hmm. Congratulations for yeah. all that you've accomplished, and the standard is super dope. I was able to get a suit from him that is exclusive to anyone who works in his yeah. room. So yeah. you got to be a part of the affluent standard to even get a suit from this man. Yeah. And I happen to have a serious sucker, you know, striped yeah. little, yeah, I mean, type of situation <laughs> going on. So I got me one that's super dope, man. I, I actually love it's actually my favorite suit now. Uh, man. So uh, well, I, I appreciate you. And I'm yeah. glad you're on the show, so welcome to the show, my Appreciate boy. Appreciate you, brother. Feel me. So I need to introduce my folks to people like you mm -hmm. and, um, and all of the things that are Joseph. So we yeah. want to make sure that we do you justice in explaining everything that you have going on. And not in a fast way or a flashy mm -hmm. way, but just really help people know why you have the organization you have and then, like, what does it do? Like, what are you doing now? Yeah, yeah, man. So I think... I would have to tell the story of what even got me to the point of starting the organization, right? Because I, of course, I have a business partner, Hafiz. He's amazing. Um, but essentially what I was doing is, you know, my first business is called Affluent. Um, and essentially that's where I specifically just do custom clothing for clients. And I generally do it in collections. So I do capsule collections, seasonal collections, or a year collection for clients. That's generally what I've transitioned to. But what I realized in my business, man, is I was just getting to this point to where I never felt like I could take a vacation. Like, I was making a lot of money, but anytime I took time off, I felt like I had this monkey on my back because I felt as soon as I got back, I had to have clients in the funnel. Mm. And what I quickly started realizing is, you know, I didn't have a business. I had a high income skill set because my business only operated when I was in it. It didn't operate like I wasn't, you know, making money in my sleep. I didn't have an online product I, like it, it required me being there and trading my time for money. And it took a lot of humbling for, um, you know, with myself to realize, I'm like, Joe, like, you can't continue to do this. Yeah, you're making a lot of money, but you want to put yourself in a position where you can scale the business and you only can work so many hours, mm. right? Regardless, even if you're charging a high premium, there's only so many hours realistically that you can work. And if I ever wanted to get to a space to where I could travel, you know, I, I could take a week off, two weeks off, not really care, or feel it, you know, with my income or feel like, dang, like next month, I got to get more clients in the funnel if I want to make this amount next month, mm -hmm. then I had to make a change. <clears throat> and around that time, you know, I had been friends with, with, with my guy Hafiz and my business partner now for about two or three years. And, you know, he had a huge following on, on YouTube, about 500,000 subscribers with, with, his own, yeah, with, with his own podcast. And, you know, he was really in the men's development space, you mm -hmm. know, and that's always been something that's really big because, you know, development and, and, and mentorships, like that's really what got me to where I'm at. So he came to me one day and he was like, look, bro, like we have a lot of guys that are in our community, right? Um, and they need help on that style tip. Right. They're looking to better themselves and they and, and they really like want that. I think we should partner with each other and, and, and see what we can do. And at the time, it made perfect sense because I already had homies that I was going to college with that had been wanting to get suits from me, but they right. just couldn't afford that higher price point. Right. Right. And I realized, like, dang, well, I still need a lower price point or a lower, at least a more introductory price point for those clients who still wanted to shop with me. 
And on top of that, I was like, man, this it makes perfect sense because now I have an ability to you know, have an online product right, that can offer at a more introductory price point while still providing a lot of value to guys and, and producing the knowledge that you know, I've spent a decade learning and teaching them how to actually wear the clothing. So mm. you know, from there, literally, you know, this was in end of November, we had this conversation and we said, let's do it. By December, we had our first launch, sold out of everything. Damn. And, you know, it transitioned from us doing just suits to then us saying, you know what, instead of us just doing suits, let's, you know, offer the suit, then the membership. And then we transitioned and say, you know, we're not even going to offer the suit and the membership. We're going to offer the membership. And the only people that can, you know, shop with us or, you know, shop these collections that we do are the people who are inside the membership group. So, you know, it's been an amazing transition, but that's really kind of was the start. It's just kind of having that uncomfortability with where I was at my business, of course, my business partner, and also just seeing that there was a need um, for men to have community, mm -hmm. right? You know, everything's getting so digital that we're moving away from the foundational things that give us life as a man, that give us, you know, just foundational skills, which is in-person community, being around other strong it's men. true. That human connection is, is definitely something that's missing now. Yeah. So <clears throat> what I wanted to ask was how many people are in the organization now? Yeah, so we have 500 guys in the organization. 500 um, guys. And, and keep in mind, you know, shout out to my business partner, Fees. He says this all the time is, you know, for us, if we really wanted to, we could be at 2,000 right now. Right. But what we're really focused on is building, you know, in his words, pyramids, not sandcastles. And what I mean by that is, you know, we only allow 100 guys every drop. Um, it is application-based. And even, for instance, this last drop, I mean, we had over 1,000 applications. We only accepted 100. What, what separates the people who you allow in and who does it? Um, I think it's a myriad of things. Of course, I mean, number one is the income to be able to afford the membership, right? Like if you fill out an application, you say you can't afford it. That Obviously, that's going to dock your application. Right. Um, the second thing is we have a series of, of questions um, that we ask on the application that kind of measure a guy's aptitude, his vision, um, character. And then, of course, we confirm that when we kind of get on the phone call. So like, for instance, a lot of guys think it's just money. But a perfect example, we had a guy owned his own real estate firm in Canada, making really good money, right? Mill plus. But there was an arrogance he had to him while we were on the phone. A guy like that can never join an organization because we have three main things for our culture, excellence. And when we talk about excellence, not just financial, it's spiritual, emotional, the character side. Second thing is assisting, right? So one of the, the really big things in our community is, hey, yeah, we, we reward guys who score, but we also want to reward the guys who are helping other people get busy as well. And Absolutely. if we feel that somebody's coming to community and all they want to take or they come with the attitude of, man, I ain't going to give nobody games. So I see you if somebody going to give me game. Right. We don't even want to create that type of culture. So right. that was another thing. He didn't fit that. And then the third thing is um, legacy. We want men who are really you know passionate about not only creating a family, but improving their last name. Like, what does that mean? Mm. Not just passing down, in, in my business partner words, um, generational wealth with generational mindset. Mm. And if you aren't, like, hitting all of those three culture points for us when we're talking with you, even if you have the money, you, you're not going to get in. That's crazy. That's powerful. <clears throat> so how? So you said the family pieces, which is very important to you. Like, uh, are you married now? Do you have a family? No, no, no. So, so that, that's a, a really big thing for me, man. And I think part of the reason for me why family is important is because I didn't grow up with a strong family. Mm. Right? Like I'm, I'm coming from a single parent household, you know, um, you know, and, and, and coming from kind of seeing a lot of things at a very young age. And, you know, it's interesting. I think when you go through certain things, you know, at a young age, there's two ways you can take it. Those things can be the reason that you don't do something or they can be the reason that you do do something. Right. So, for instance, you know, you might grow up and you might see, you know, drugs in your family. You might you might have smelled, you know, we you might have smelled crack. You know, coming home to the house. Gotcha. And, and that can turn into, oh, that's the reason I do it. Right. Or when you see those things, you can be aware enough and, 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 and you know, say to yourself, man, this is the reason why I will never do that. Because I know what that turns into. I know what that feels like. And for me, um, that's what it was. Uh, my business partner, Fees, is married as well, though. Ha has a, just had his, had his kid as well. So, you know, shout out to him. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big piece, man. Just building the last name and. You know, uh, of course, you might be able to relate having that feeling, that weight that you're going to have to be the one to change your family. dynamic. Facts. So I, it, and that's important. Yeah. It's because yeah. I, I think there's just some of us just don't have that. Like, I mm -hmm. mean, we like we're in a mentorship yeah. space and we coach and stuff like that. And it comes to a point where you realize that everybody does, doesn't have the thing. 
Mm-hmm. And the thing is, is it, it doesn't have a definition, yeah. but it's like you don't have the, the X factor. Some people just don't got it. Some people mm-hmm. stop at no. Some people stop at a hurdle. Mm. Some people, they just like, yeah, it, no. they, they, they're, yeah. they can comprehend. Mm-hmm. They're intelligent. They probably have degrees, all of these different things, but they just don't have the thing. So sometimes when I'm in that coaching space and I, and I get to people, when they get to that wall, they always stop. Mm. And it frustrates me. That's what it used to do. Yeah. But now I have to just be able to explain why they need someone else in their companies or in their business. They can't be an individual entrepreneur. They need to have like, these are people who need to have CFOs for their companies, operations managers for mm-hmm. their companies. They, they can start a company or get the idea, but they can't run it because they stop at no's, they stop at hurdles, mm-hmm. they stop at anything that might, like it, sh- it should go completely easy to yeah. them. But if it doesn't, they stop. I'll give you an example. Mm-hmm. I'll give, I got a close yeah. person to me. I told him to set up an Etsy store for me. Mm-hmm. I said, set up the Etsy store for me. I'm just trying to do a quick product just to show, give an example. Mm-hmm. And the person stopped that. Oh, they they not letting me set it up. I don't know what happened. Oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to be able hey, to. Hey, go on YouTube. Why you know, is the Etsy store not? Like, yeah, yeah. it can be that yeah, or just yeah. it just can't not be done. Yeah, like, yeah. there's people who got that mentality. Yeah. Then there's the people who like, yeah, I couldn't do it. It's just like it didn't work for me. But I'll go and do it. I'm not going to stop until it works. Mm-hmm. Call a, If I got to call Resources, the reps, whatever. Some, you gotta, yeah, but it yeah, got yeah, it yeah, got to yeah. be done gotta because be that's done. what the job is. But some people don't have that. And it's, it takes yeah. a level of maturity to understand that everybody doesn't have that thing. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to family and yeah. friends and mentorship, when you're around people, like you got to be mature enough to not make them feel bad mm-hmm. for not having that thing. But also just take the accountability in yourself to say, I have it. And I'm going to put everybody on my back because... I have it and I don't want to have this gift in vain because I feel like it's a gift in the type of world that we live in yeah. because we can always create opportunities for a bunch of people. Whereas that I could have been here without that ability. Since I have it, I don't want to just do it a little bit. I got to do it big. So that's kind of how I feel about it. Yeah. You know, it's weird, man. Like, <clears throat> you know, one of the things or concepts I was thinking about the other day is just like this idea. Of, I remember being in a space where where I was praying to start making some of the income that I'm making now and mm-hmm. just like praying every day, you know, saying confessions. And then it's like God started giving me what I needed to go through to get to it. Right. And I didn't realize like, and this is what a lot of people don't, I don't think, I don't think they think about is as you make more income, there's a level of emotional fitness you have to have to even handle that income. Right. Facts. Cause like, like for instance, somebody might be like, Oh, I want to make a hundred thousand dollars a month. Well, bro, can you, can you handle having to pay $100,000 in, in expenses? Right. Like, do you even know what that feels like? And especially when you start dealing with, with money, you know, you also can deal with bigger money mistakes. Oh, yeah. Right? So, like, even for me, I remember we were in a position, I talked about this, man, like a year and a half, two years ago, or, or a year and a half ago, really a year ago, um, you know, we made like a $200,000 business mistake that I had to pay back. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like it's like little things like that where, you know, you talk about wanting to make more money, but it's like, are you going to fold? Are you even going to have the emotional fitness to deal with that? Right. Like seeing negative two hundred thousand and you got to pay it back. That's nuts. No, that's you, you, you know what I mean? And it's I just think it's like, important for everybody to go through that point so they know not to never make that mistake twice, though. So I know you probably happy it happened to you earlier. Yeah, oh. That's what they say. Fail, fail fast. Yeah. And then you just recover. The, the, the only thing that has to happen is you have to make the decision that no matter what happens, regardless mm-hmm. if it's money, yeah. that's the obstacle. It can be all type of things that can happen other than money. Mm-hmm. And whatever the case may be, I'm going to still go through it anyway. I'm going to just keep going. I'm going to do whatever. But you being battle tested, though, mm-hmm. when you it's only 200 grand, yeah. when you get to 20 million, yeah. it's like, all right, yeah. I know what it is. I know, I know <laughs> what they'll be prepared for. So mm-hmm. like, like that's, a, that's a great point. And I want to I circle back to the family thing. So, how, how old are you now? 29, man. 29. Yeah. Very young man. Yeah. So, you, you got a lot of time on your hands. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean, I say that to say, baby, because uh, when you talk about family, and mm-hmm. it's risky mm-hmm. being out here on these streets. Yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah. going to say that. So, out here on the streets, bro, you see what's going on with Zion Williamson. Crazy. So, those type of situations, like, he's a kid. He's like 22 years old. Mm-hmm. But also, he's worth, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. And him being open like allowing people to be inside his energy can mess up his whole career mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah, and the reason i say that is because even myself like i go through things right before i was in a relationship i'm in a relationship now mm-hmm. but um before i was in a relationship like you're exposing yourself to situations that can mess up your whole career by you being out too exposed yeah so the re like the reason i'm saying that is because like sometimes us thinking like we need time for ourselves it actually messes us up and sometimes 
if we get into a relationship, it can like propel you in a way because the discipline that comes with it. Because yeah. you can think about the difference. Like when you're single, you on the streets, mm -hmm. you moving around. But you're also okay with doing things that you wouldn't do if you was in a relationship. Right, right. Like allowing a person that you know, like we, we deal with, with mm. women that we never would really date. Yeah. You know, like yeah, I'll be yeah, like, we, yeah, even in a section, yeah, yeah. we'll be yeah, out with people yeah, who I would yeah. never date this person. Yeah. But we're around them. So that mm. energy, us being around that could be catastrophic because like a rumor can start, like your mm. reputation can be messed up just by accusation. And the accusation is just as good as it actually happening. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now you can be in a situation like, where someone accuses you of something and you mm -hmm. know it's not true, right. everybody knows your character, but that doesn't matter because the accusation already is out there. Right. If I wasn't surrounding myself around those type of people, mm -hmm. then I would have never had to worry about it. So that's why I feel like, you know, the family aspect is important because if we start to, to look for that, I think it'll help us propel ourselves even more. Mm -hmm. And if we don't, it actually exposes us to be a whole bunch of liabilities around us. Well, yeah, you know, it, it's interesting, man. Um, some of my top mentors all are married. Right. Um, and, you know, it's an interesting study, too, where basically they say that married men make more. Yeah. Right. And now, granted, there's a lot of reasons. Right. Because if you have a family, obviously, you know, you're going to have to you're going to have to provide. So there's a, there's a certain level of work that, that's going to be necessary. But I do think that there is something to be said about when you're when you're forced to, to focus and not have as many distractions. Right. Because, right. you know, there's a level where like exposure promotes growth, but also promote disaster, because if you expose to the wrong thing, you know what I mean? It, it, it can end bad for you. Similar to a guy like, like Zion, and I, I feel for a kid like that because I can only imagine having that much access that soon. You know, there's a lot of people that are like clowning him, but at the end of the day, no, th those same that. people clowning him have never touched 20, 30 million at one time in right. 21, 22. Right. They, they've, they've never experienced getting off a, a, a bus and there's 10, 15, 20 women that you've been looking at on Instagram, but they're actually there to see him Right. At the game. So, right. you know, I think a lot of people, if they've never experienced that level of, of access, they really shouldn't judge because they're talking about what they wouldn't do, but they, they've never been able to even right. have the access and, and, to do and it. And think about it and just at his age, man. And like, if you come from a situation, like I'm not saying that this is the situation for Zion, yeah. Yeah. but if you came from a situation where you're not used to that tension at all in yeah. any way. Yeah. He's from a small town. Right. Too, and bro. then... Like, you drop into where you one of the most famous people in the world at mm -hmm. the time. Yeah. And now you got women who know they, they actually prey on people yeah, like Zion. Yeah. And they know yeah. that yeah. he's green to that and they're going to throw at him all of these different things facts. that he's never seen. Yeah, facts, facts. So they could take advantage of the situation. So it's hard to judge it. But what we will say is I think just the, the fact that he's even letting himself be exposed to the women he's choosing, mm -hmm. even if he do get God. Even if yeah, he get yeah, got, yeah, but yeah, look yeah. at look at the yeah. selection. Yeah, so that's yeah. got. I think mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know Zion's if his mm -hmm. parents are in his life or nothing like that. Yeah. A lot of that got to do with you know family, family being and, around and, you. And also, here and here's the the tough position. Not only is it family, but having a strong enough mentor that you respect. Because Facts. if you become the breadwinner within your family too early, yeah, there's a level of of leadership that you have, and also. I don't want to say cockiness or ego, but it's going to be very hard for somebody to tell you what to do and you just dropped off a meal for them to be straight. Right. Yeah. It's, t it's, it's just it, like it's, the John Morant situation. Yeah. It, it's because cause it's just like you can't really. It's like I'm funding your lifestyle and you're trying to tell me what to yeah, do. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a respect thing. It, it, it's, it's past money. It's more yeah. respect. And, and, and the money kind of puts the respect on their name. Like yeah. if a person like. Magic Johnson were to be trying to yeah, was mentoring yeah. these people, yeah, yeah. it'd be different. But it's yeah. hard for the like you know, and when you're growing up without mm -hmm. knowing that you need a mentor, you're gonna think you're good. You're gonna be like, I made it. Yeah. I, I, I said I was gonna do that mm -hmm. and I did it. Mm -hmm. And now I'm making more money than everybody I ever met. And that's your whole circle. Yeah. Like you're not gonna go look for a lot of these guys, especially mm -hmm. if they don't know and people wasn't there already. Yeah, that's you're okay. not gonna go say, look, let me go look for a guy like Magic Johnson and have him mentor me because I know I'm gonna be going through these things in the future. You gotta look for that. That takes maturity. And these mm -hmm. are young kids like they're like when I was 23 I was a kid you know yeah. what I mean he's tw they're 22 years old so they're kids so when you're talking about having the maturity to say I need to go look for a mentor and take it mm -hmm. seriously after just playing basketball you gotta know how we was I already yeah. say I look yeah. I'm, I'm like low-key glad I didn't make it to the league because yeah. how immature I was when I was hooping Bro. if I would have got the bag I would have been doing just mm -hmm. as crazy stuff as him yeah. probably not 
to that yeah. magnitude. <laughs> because, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, luckily for myself, yeah. I already was getting women and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But you could see even just from the, mm -hmm. the, the style of dress that Zion chooses to do, uh, yeah, what yeah, type of, yeah, you know, yeah, how yeah, a person yeah. will identify yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. being honest. Yeah, yeah. So at the end of the day, it's like, we got to really um, think about how their mindset will work after facts. making that much money. So you're talking facts. So let's talk about what, why we on this, because mm -hmm. I know you talked about people not being able to have the right mindset and mm -hmm. goals and moral compass to be yeah. a, a, in the fluid standard. Mm -hmm. But like, let's talk about the John Moran situation. Mm -hmm. how, how do you think, uh, you know, was the, the judgment on him getting the 30 game suspension, was that harsh? Or do you think it should have been more? Or how do you view the whole situation? Um, so honestly, I think the 30 game suspension was very generous. Right. Right. Um, I mean, in retrospect to the amount of heat the NBA was getting, how much slack John Morant was getting, I actually think that's a very smooth, like very smooth verdict for him. I think at the end of the day, you know, with John Morant, it's tough, right? Because on one side, you, you can look at the, the technical aspect of like, bro, he's not breaking a law. Facts. So, so there's, there's one side that's like he's not breaking the law, and you know, there is a level of like where if there's another NBA guy who maybe is a hunt, like likes to hunt and has rifles, and what, what does that perception now look like? Totally different. When, when, when they do that. So, that's one side of the argument. The second side of the argument is I understand from a branding perspective, For sure. and, and, and the NBA considering itself more pop than hip hop. I understand how it cannot be the best look for a branding situation because obviously John Morant is somebody that the NBA is potentially pushing as the next face of right. the league right. as a as LeBron James, you know, leaves. And if they want to continue to be global, continue to get sponsorship, like there's a lot more back end money right. that's tied into it. I can understand from them, they're trying to protect the investment as a whole that is the NBA. Right. You know what I mean? So I I really feel both sides. Like from a business perspective, I understand them having to like kind of slap his hand yeah. but from a <clears throat> like a cultural and just understanding how it could have been looked at differently if John Morant wasn't John Morant with tattoos and a colored dread like how how that is perceived very differently right I think it is all about perception completely about perception so the the hunting thing yeah. is completely separate than listening yeah. to NBA NBA young, young, boy. young boy. <laughs> It's completely different and listening to NBA Young yeah, yeah, Boy fact, 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 fact. and promoting and, and the song is yeah, aggressive and yeah, talking yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. killing and things yeah. of that nature. So that's one piece of it. Mm -hmm. The second part, clearly it's not it's not illegal, but the thing about it is if you have any job, like outside of the yeah, NBA, yeah. if they see you at a workplace, let's say if it was corporate America yeah, and facts. he did the same thing, he probably would get fired for that. So yeah. that's what you got to remember that the NBA players, they're not entrepreneurs there yeah. that's a job yeah. you're literally <laughs> getting a w2 like it's, yeah, it's no it's, yeah, it's, it's literally that's what it is a high income skill set yeah you yeah, know what yeah, i mean it's yeah, a high yeah. income skill set but it's yeah. it's a w2 yeah. position yeah. and they literally can fire you mm -hmm. and hire you the same way even yeah. though they sign major contracts it's still a non that's why you can dock his pay like that right even though he has a contract it's like okay cool boom 30 games no pay mm -hmm. that's huge but what it is, is it's a job. So when he got to remember that he signed up, he has a job. So for the people who say, oh, man, it's not illegal. Well, if I work at a job and they tell me I can't flash guns mm -hmm. on my Instagram, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to flash guns on my Instagram. They gave him a slap on the wrist the first mm -hmm. time. He, they made him go get therapy. They let him come back. To me, the reason why they had to give him a suspension, yeah. and I think it was light because mm -hmm. he kind of was making a mockery of it the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like joking and yeah, laughing. Every time you yeah. see him, it's like, it's not a big deal. He not like... He out here doing the gritty. Yeah, you know? I mean, he well, not... You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying he got to be sad, <laughs> yeah. but while you suspended... It's decorum that, that yeah. you have. To, you got to at least put on the... Man, yeah, like, you got to act like, man, yeah. I wish I was playing. Yeah. But he's like, man, no, nah, it's, it's up. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a, a parade. It's all I see here. Yeah. Like he on, he on that tight time. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. bro, like you got to just know. It's like a slap in the face. Then they do it yeah. again, like the next week or so. Yeah, bro. And he does it again. They're like, all right. Come on. Bro, they really had. They, I thought they was gonna give him that year job. Well, well, you know, he, he was kind of Satan was the toy gun because he was like, look, it was a, you know what I'm saying? It was the toy, the toy gun play. You know. What I mean? Listen, but he still, pulled that joint yeah, out yeah. quick. Pause. He was like. <laughs> 
Hing. <laughs> Yo, it's like he can't wait to get. But you know, like like he he's yeah. young enough to make mistakes. Like yeah. I just think that I, I like that they mm-hmm. they penalized him, but it wasn't crazy. Yeah. And I yeah, like yeah. that you know they didn't like assassinate him in the media because they didn't. Yeah, like, the NBA was, actually was smooth and not yeah. saying nothing crazy. Yeah, they didn't assassinate him. Yeah, so he's gonna be able to recover and he'll be fine. I'm sure he'll yeah. learn from his mistakes. Yeah, he's be but the right. thing about it is. Like, we got to get used to, even us as, like, consumers mm-hmm. of media, mm-hmm. people who are fans of the games yeah. and fans of different athletes Facts. and actors, we need to get used to actually being able to let them, you know, make mistakes. Because now, the only thing that's different now yeah. is that when you make a mistake, you make a mistake in public, public and you can be man. ostracized. You can yeah. be, like, it, everybody's not mentally tough enough to bounce back from an L in front of everyone. That's why when I'm teaching and coaching mentorship and mm-hmm. business, like, I understand why people yeah. are a little nervous or scared to promote their business yeah. because let's say if you start a business and you promote it and then it fails everybody like oh, yeah you started a business before that shit yeah. was trash what happened to that business it's gonna make you feel like damn like if i mess up again then they're mm-hmm. gonna do the same shit again so i have you scared and timid mm-hmm. but we gotta allow ourselves we gotta give ourselves grace and we yeah. gotta be able to let others make mistakes publicly because they mm-hmm. make that's all they're doing if i put myself on the street and then my if somebody if i if one person calls me a scammer yeah. It, that's enough for a million people, other people to say, yeah, he's scamming. Oh, man, that's a whole You feel me? And, yeah. and it's not like, and, and we're getting yeah. to the point where we don't understand the difference between an investment and a scam. Yeah. And that's what needs to be talked about. Like, yeah. when you're talking about, like, let's just say if you do, mm-hmm. if you do what other cultures do, yeah. you put a, a joint fund together, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? You do crowdfunding yeah, yeah. and you bring stuff together for our community and we mm-hmm. go try to invest in something, right? right if right. you do that, mm-hmm. and I can put this what, on my life, if yeah. I'm lying, tell me in the chat. Mm-hmm. If you put a, a, a fund together and we all invest in it and then it doesn't go well, they'll call you a scammer. Yeah, call, that's yeah, not yeah. a scam. Yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 that's literally not a scam. That's business. That's business. Yeah, yeah, that's business. All investments yeah. do not go the way you want them to. Yeah, yeah. Now, the issue here is you got people who have money in other cultures and they understand business. So if it doesn't go well, mm-hmm. they're not going to be like, he scammed us. They're going to be like... Yeah. It didn't work out. We'll go into the next business. Like so, the market went down, this, that, and the third. You understand all the, when an investor invests, yeah. he understands an investment. Yeah. I'm not going to make an investment and then when it goes wrong, I'm like, oh man, you scammed me. I'm going to say, oh, what happened? Oh, the market went down. It tanked. This is what happened. I'm like, all right, cool. Shh, let's go to the next one. Let's keep moving. But when you got a people who are investing who don't know nothing about business, mm-hmm. don't know nothing about equity, about you know any financial literacy, yeah. and I come and invest with you off the street and say, look, oh, $5,000 in this coin, I want to capitalize off of it, yeah. and then it doesn't go right, they're calling you a scammer versus yeah. understanding business. And that's the problem that I'm seeing in our culture. It's like, bro, how would anybody ever be able to do what other cultures do and level us up if every time we try to do it mm-hmm. and it goes wrong, we get ostracized? Who would do it twice? I would yeah. just run up money for myself. Yeah, man. So I, I think I think there's a there's a lot of layers to that, right? Um, obviously, what, what you talked about is true. There's there's a difference between an investment and a scam. There's risk that's involved with everything. So to act as if there is no risk, right? When and, and nothing is going to be a hundred percent. I think is um, it, it, it's it's not fair, um, and I don't think it's just good business business acumen to to go into any investment thinking that it's going to be a hundred percent. Right. Now on the flip side, I think what we struggle with in our culture Mm -hmm. is understanding the SOPs that happen if it doesn't go well. Right. Um, So I think they're like, if an investment isn't going well and it's going south, you need to, you need to have twice and three times the amount of documentation explaining what's happening. And I think because sometimes there's not enough documentation on the back end, once those things start happening, right? Obviously a person gets more anxiety. I'll give you a perfect example, right? Even in clothing, like one thing I use, I learned very, very early on is how to manage client expectation and also how to deal with conflict, especially because I started in retail. Mm-hmm. So there would be situations to where, you know, let's say a client gets a custom suit from me. I'm, I'm literally looking at the back end that my company is providing me and it's giving me a date. So let's say they get a, they get a custom from me in May. Back end system says, hey, it's going to be here June 1st. Let's say it's for a wedding, Right. Now, what happens when June 1st, not even June 1st, it's May 26th. I'm looking at the tracking Mm -hmm. and I'm looking and now it's saying it's not going to arrive until June 6th. Now, a lot of times what you could do is you could wait till June 1st. Client comes in mad and you're like, well, look, the system told me that it's it's not my fault. Right. It uh, does. that's what a lot of people, that's what a lot of times happens, right? You, you absolve the responsibility right. to something else. But what I learned 
And, and nine times out of 10, th this always happens. If I'm able to bring the problem to the client first, before it escalates or before they have to hit me up, almost always, especially if I'm sincere with my tone, they're almost always cool. Right. So what, what I would do is May 20th, hey, hey, John, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm incredibly sorry because I dropped the ball. I know that we promised you June 1st. I, I know that it's your wedding, but I'm looking right now and I'm completely sorry, but in the back end, it's showing that it's going to be June 6th. Now, what I want to do for you, because I want to write this wrong, I know that we completely dropped the ball. We're already going to dock this suit off, so you're going to get this for free. But what I want to do is provide you at least two or three solutions, right, with how we can fix this for your wedding. I have two or three other options that are in the store that, are, that I've already laid out for you um, that I think is going to work for your wedding. When can you come in so we can make sure we get this right? We're going to have all of the alterations rushed for you. It's going to only be a day. I want to make sure that we get this right for your wedding. And you're still going to have the custom piece when it comes in. But at this point, I just want to be as solution-oriented as possible to make this right. That is a completely different feeling Absolutely. than June 1st coming in. You're like, what the frick is my suit at? Da -da 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 -da. So I, I think that's the other side that helps. If you, like, if you, you, know, if you know the investment going... Hey, look, investor court. Hey, guys, look, I'm going to be completely transparent with you. The market has not been looking good. We are down 10% right now. I know that we promised and we were looking at 10% returns right now. So we have three options that we are going to give you. Option number one, if you want to pull the money from your fund, we can do that. All I ask is we're going to need at least three months because right now the money's locked up. Option of, like you got to give people enough options to where at least now they can feel secure. But if you don't give them anything, you give them the chance to create their own story. Yep. And what you never want the client to do is create that because you they, they make it make a hell of a story. Oh, yeah. They, yeah, they, they, they start going they crazy. Going it's like, bro, that's not what happened. Like, they going uh, Hollywood uh, all out. They going to hit you. Yeah. And then by the time you're trying to explain it now, it's, yeah. it's already created a own fake story. So like the word scam is being thrown around mm -hmm. a lot when there aren't yeah. scams and you're are, correct yeah. about communication. Like, but you know, like again, there's, there's always two sides. <laughs> there's always, yeah, I promise y'all, like you don't even, fact. people, yeah, yeah, fact, people fact, do fact. chargebacks and they don't think that's that scamming. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A, a person who is calling someone a scammer will do a chargeback <laughs> knowing that they receive the services and they don't wow. think that's a scam. Think, yeah. And I'll be like, you got to know that a service was given to you mm -hmm. and you act like it didn't get given to you and that money that you sent goes back to you it comes out of the it doesn't come from thin air yeah. some people think that it really comes from thin air <laughs> like I, i'm telling you i, I really <laughs> met these people oh yeah, i didn't yeah, even know yeah. that they literally try to explain yeah, it to yeah, me yeah, yeah, yeah. and i'm like how do you think what do you think happens if i have an account mm -hmm. <laughs> and i got a transaction for three thousand, three thousand, three thousand. I go and take my daughter out. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I spent this money. And now mm -hmm. when I get to the restaurant, it's been reversed out of my account. And now I look crazy because mm -hmm. you did a, a fraudulent chargeback. Yeah, yeah. But they don't they don't think of they it that way because like that. in their circles it's normalized. Mm -hmm. That's a normalized scam. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, like the yeah, people yeah, they facts. you've never heard people who do chargeback being called scammers. Have you ever heard that before? Yeah, no, nah, but that that is true. But it's yeah, a scam. Yeah, people do that. They do it a lot. People, funny enough, people do that in retail. People do that a lot. I, and I used to see some people would come in, oh, I charge back, da 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 da. I'm like, bro, what? In a, in a real, yeah. in real life, and and the thing about it is, we gotta really like. It's hard for the reason why I even brought the conversation up is, mm -hmm. is for people like myself who want to make impact and mm -hmm. really help people yeah, make yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. It's difficult to 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 go into a crowd of strangers and say, look, I have found something that has changed my life and has made me a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And I don't like seeing people who look like me who come from where I come from yeah. struggle constantly yeah. on something that I feel is an easy situation to solve. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able to come together and build something for y'all to be able to benefit from. Mm -hmm. But if I were to do that mm -hmm. and this person doesn't do their part, I could potentially be called a scammer. So what you see is you see people, that it's like a double-sided sword. Because mm -hmm. when someone makes it yeah. and they don't reach back out, they get talked about. When someone reaches back out and tries to help and something goes wrong in their eyes, he gets talked about. Which one would you rather do? So what normally happens for us in our community, we start to make it and say, fuck them. Mm -hmm. And it's not because it's fuck them. It's because yeah. the risk. The, the problems that are associated. Yeah, you yeah, feel me? Yeah, and yeah, and yeah, I've really, yeah. I've talked to like some billionaires about this. Mm -hmm. 
And like, there's a lot of people who will see, like, you talking, even talking about Obama and them. Mm -hmm. And where you, I don't know if you know how J. Cole went to see Obama. Mm -hmm. It's a real story. He went to go talk to Obama and ask him why he ain't giving back to the black yeah. community and all of yeah. this stuff. But you get to a point where the candid conversation is like, if you have all of this to risk now, mm -hmm. and it's just a real question. And most people, if you talk to them, even at the bottom, you say, if you have all of this to risk, you got, you got equity, you got a great reputation, mm -hmm. The community supports you yeah. from from the community yeah. supporting the people winning yeah. without them going back. Yeah, they supporting you. They saying you one of us, and you you invited mm -hmm. to the barbecue. You showing mad love. You doing your thing as a black person. You got all of this to risk. Mm -hmm. Now, are you going to take all of this and go back and risk it for this person who wouldn't change places with you? I mean, who wouldn't do the same thing? Mm -hmm. This person who now is at a survival mode now is willing to, if it doesn't yeah. work out, they'll blame you for everything and ruin your reputation that if you never did it, you would have been straight. So now I had this, I had this conversation like with mm -hmm. people. I was like, this is why I, they're not doing it. And they, like, they, they look at me and they say, more power to you. Yeah. And I get it. And it's a valid reason why mm -hmm. somebody wouldn't. And then you got people that literally make it their mission to take mm -hmm. down or find when you ever messed up. You get yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's I mean, well, and another thing too is I think at the end of the day, moderation is key in all aspects, right? So, for instance, for the people who hyper focalize on scams and, you know, this not being the right thing, I feel like that is just as disingenuous as you focusing on the people that are saying everything's good in business, right? Like, this, like, like the same way you will focus and be like, well, look, you know, they're not saying, you know, uh, this and they are talking about these scammers and they are. Well, you're just as disingenuous, but also not pointing out the people that aren't scamming. That that are like 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 it's two it's two sides of the same coin. So you have to have you have to have intellectual honesty if you're going to really run that play because now you're virtually you're virtue signaling, but you aren't truly because if you're really being balanced, you would say, Hey, look, these are scams, but here are some recommended businesses that's been vetted that I can honestly say are good because what you're what you're 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 contributing to the problem on the other side of the coin. Because now what you're creating is a culture where nobody wants to do business, which, I mean, which, it's, scary, it, it, it's not like there's 401 kids, people are, so you are going to have to create some type of side income. Right. So if you create that mindset within the culture that no one can do business, that's just as bad as what you're saying on the other side of people saying that there's no scams, that you shouldn't watch out for information. That, right. uh, everyone's, everyone's culture, everyone's, like, it's just as intellectually dishonest. So what I always say is, just just have moderation. Be willing to point out what's bad, of course, but also be willing to point out what's good. If you're going to go Johnny Bravo Facts. all one side yeah. on, on it's, what like, it's, it, tough. It, it, like, it's tough. I like that. I think yeah. that's a very good, like, okay, that's an issue. What's the solution? Like for even those people who do like are they make it their mission to call out scammers, they do gotta point people in the right direction to show us that people who look like us do do good business. Yeah, yeah And exactly. I think that's important yeah, 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 yeah. because it can be scary, bro. Like, mm -hmm. even for myself, like, it's like, yo, you could take on a mentee and, and you'd be like, yeah, yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I know this works. I know my, I, yeah. I got classes for you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yeah, Friday. Yeah, yeah. You showed up Monday. You said, fuck everything else. Now, yeah. the, the, the regimen is questioned. But you like, but I like that solution. I like that. And mm -hmm. that's, that's the reason why these conversations need to be had, because yeah. otherwise, it'll never come up. Nobody will never fix it. Mm -hmm. Everybody will be just scared to invest. But really, there's no way to become wealthy without investing. That's a fact. So if we literally just scare everybody out of investing with anyone, mm -hmm. they're never going to change their life. They're going to constantly be a worker for the rest of their life. Yeah. And is that better? I don't think so. Especially us trying to trick and kind of close that, that wealth gap between mm -hmm. us and other cultures. We're at the bottom. Yeah, I mean, and here's another problem. At the end of the day, you know, everyone's getting paid. So, 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 so that, that's another layer to this conversation, too, because it's like, again, on both sides. The people that are saying people are scamming are getting paid. So, you know, you're, you're, you, in a way, you become more incentivized to have more sensationalized titles and more sensationalized content that affects people emotionally. Right. The same way you may feel like the people that are just saying everyone's making a meal and the business is good are incentivized to have that because you might have people that are struggling that want to make that money. Right. So again, it's just like both sides have to come together to have balance. And again, you, you, just, you don't want to create a culture where people are afraid to invest themselves and afraid to get to the next level because 
Most people are most people. So you can't, you don't want to create a culture where the people that aren't trying to be most people and are at least trying to get to the next level, you scaring them out of that. So it's like, at the end of the day, what is your impact? And some might say, well, hey, my impact is I'm keeping people from losing money. But if you are not giving them a solution, it's, you're basically, in a way, you're kind of Kevin Samuelson. You're telling them, hey, you're 35, you know, you have two kids. It's a wrap. Right. No one's so going to like you. don't do anything. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, well, where am I supposed to go from here? Like, oh, so yeah, I just yeah, die like, alone. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just like. There, you, so I like that, but I, I really yeah. like that because that's what, it's, it's very important to talk about these things, man, yeah. and, and, and in a positive way, like, without trying to talk about anybody else. Mm -hmm. And just in general, we need to think about like, okay, all right, this dude, let's call these dudes out. Yeah. But look, these dudes right here, they're valid. I know these boys yeah. getting busy. They've been battle tested mm -hmm. and they still like, and it's important. Let me, I'm, 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 I'm ended off with this. Yeah. It's important. Relationships are so important that mm. I can't even give out a distributor, a connect yeah, clearly that is personal to me mm -hmm. because if they come from me and mess up my relationship, oh, bro. it'd be done for me. So Facts. now you get to a point where you're like, all right. I have to be careful what I say online, who, what mm. I coach. Like, you can't yeah. fully teach it publicly. Yeah. That's why you have to bring them into the mentorship. Mm -hmm. Because if you teach them it halfway, they'll go out there and, uh, and just and, do some bullshit. And do half the information. Half of yeah, it. Like, and then it's like, ah. oh, you taught them half. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I let them know my expertise. And then I explained that I had an offer where I can really dive in and teach you more about it. Mm -hmm. But it's an investment because... Not because the information isn't free, but for my time to come spend with you and teach it to you. Yeah. So it's just like, I want you to win. I want you to get it. I want you to really understand it. But I can't chase. I got, look how many followers we got. Yeah, I can't God, be bro. like, oh, I'm going to yeah. dive into your life. It doesn't even make sense for me. And if I taught my students that, it would be weird. Like, okay, yeah, no matter how what you got on your plate, yeah. how many kids, how many employees, how many people got to get fed, take your time to do everything for free. It would be weird. No, so yeah, yeah. that's just not a, that's not a question. But we got to really take the time to really have the conversations without being cat ostracizing everybody and judging everyone. Like, cause I get it. I get both yeah, sides. I get, yeah. I get the scammer dude. I get the uh, I get the dude who calls out the scammer guys. I get I get that. Yeah. I get it. It <laughs> yeah, can make you popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, for my people who do that, mm -hmm. I would rather them be like, all right, just like you just said, these dudes over here, funny style. Go over here. Even if you can call them out, I would prefer. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't like calling them out by name. I would. I would just rather you call out the situation so they can't yeah, aware. Or just. Or just be like, you know, you know, you can have a. You, you might have a video that says, "Hey, three red flags that you know you're um, that you might be in fraudulent business with someone." Next video, three green flags to look for that you aren't. Because like, you, you know, if it, you're it leads them to the right way. Yeah. Yeah. You. You. You just. Again, I think you have to be intellectually. Balance, and if you're only doing one side, you're just as disingenuous right. as the people that you you may be calling out, right? So it's like no, you don't want to throw throw uh, stones from a glass house. This is right, true. This is true. <laughs> and, and and but but to your point, man, what's really interesting, and even for us, like with the standard, one of the things that we started even doing is when we onboard people, we have them sign a code of conduct. Mm. So. And the code of conduct is something that we can refer because we've actually had certain members that like it, they weren't active and we've removed from the group. Mm. And the reason we're able to do this because we have a code of conduct that we go through and that they sign. And if they aren't following certain things, we reference that and say, hey, the, this is what you signed to be a part of this organization in this group. You're not doing these things. So if you're not doing these things from a culture standpoint, we... Like, it's not even good in, in, for the business to have you in because now you're messing up the vibe exactly. for everyone. It's very important. So um, I, I, I like how we went transition there. So I want to uh, ask you, how could the people watching this mm -hmm. be able to put an application in to join the Affluent Standard? Yeah, absolutely. So what you can uh, go to is www.theaffluentstandard.com. Um, sign out the application. We're actually opening them back up and we will be accepting people uh, late August, um, early September. So uh, you can do that. You also can follow us on Instagram at The Affluent Standard. Again, my Instagram is Mr. Hans. I have it tagged on there as well. But uh, yeah, you, you can uh, essentially do that. And, you know, we'll be looking and going through and finalizing all applications, like I said, late August and, you know, doing final round of interviews. Absolutely. And I'll drop all the websites and links to Instagram, everything right below this video. If you enjoyed this, I really want y'all to take this time to subscribe and just share it to about five people just in case they want to catch the same vibe that we on. This is 
episode of No Fluff the Podcast. Jay Hines, we out of this team, man. We get in our style. You feel me? Mmm. <laughs>